Hello everyone. This is Anshuman, your host for today, and we have with us a very prestigious guest, Professor Dr. Shashikala Gurpur, Director of SLS Pune, Dean Faculty of Law at Symbiosis International, and Jean Monnet Chair Professor. Dr. Gurpur has completed her graduation in law from Mangalore University, followed by a PhD in international law from Mysore University, where she was also a gold medalist. She has not only been a member of the 19th Law Commission of India and also been on the National Judicial Academy Council, but has also been recognized as one of the top 100 legal luminaries of India by LexisNexis. She has also received the award of Kittur Rani Chennamma Award from the government of Karnataka. Further to that, quite recently, she has been featured among the top 100 women personalities in the book, The Phenomenal She, which was launched by the National Bar Association of India. Hello everyone, welcome. So today, we will be having a very engaging and informative discussion with Dr. Gurpur about what future options are there after a career in law, and also how great lawyers think, and what are the different options available to someone before and after graduation when they're pursuing their degree in law. So without further ado, let me start off with the first question to ma'am. So ma'am, one of the most common questions that we have received from our audience is what are the future options that I have if I pursue a BA or a BBA LLB? Because I have seen a lot of people who are pursuing their law degree sitting outside the court wearing a black suit trying to earn a living. So what are your thoughts on this? Thank you very much. It's a very interesting question. Uh, the audience have rightfully asked that question because our country has got about 1,500 plus law schools. And uh, yearly we get in our entrance examination, including symbiosis or uh, which is named as SLAT and the law school entrance exam named CLAT. Right. And then uh, some of the universities also factor in the international examination of LSAT. Altogether about uh, 70,000 plus students opt for legal education. But if you see in these law schools, there are different tiers of law schools. As uh, National Bar Council of India, way back uh, in its uh, in 2010, in its uh, curriculum development report, lamented that there are three or four different tiers of law schools in terms of uh, facilities, compliance with the BCI regulations, and quality. That is the truth that we have. So, from that point of view, the question of uh, whether every student who comes out out of every law school will get plush placements or will end up as a litigation lawyer or end up in prestigious law firms or eventually become judge. The answer is each case study is different. Each student is different. Absolutely. Each one's life journey is different, capability is different. How they invest their time in the law school also matters. Therefore, your question on BLLB, BBLLB students whether all of them will end up as uh, uh, people waiting for their fortune to blossom in the court uh, uh, premises, answer is no. But those who wait for their fortunes to blossom in the court premises without much brief in their hand need not be also seen as losers. Because I have many cases, my own uh, uh, first batch student in Mangalore, he used to be uh, training himself as a student with the lead criminal lawyer of the city. And by the time he finished his degree, the criminal lawyer invited him to use his office. But he used that office barely for six months. He opened his own office. But when he opened his own office, he didn't have briefs. He used to solicit clients in the court premises. And initially, first brief, till you get the first brief, this grind is always there. It's a, it's a formative process. One should not see it as frustration or uh, defeat or a kind of what you call as a loss. Uh, as a learning process for them. Yes, legendary advocate, late Ram Jait Malani, who was our professor emeritus, he used to, who was who was one person institutionalizing poly roles like as a parliamentarian, as a nominated member of Rajya Sabha, as an interlocutor in Kashmir, as a crusader against emergency, name it and he had it. But Jait Malani sir in his autobiography writes about the way in which he was sitting in the refugee camps and writing applications and eking a, a humble pie of 30 rupees a day. And then he was able to, because he was qualified in the British India, in the Pakistan, Sindh province, he had to qualify in Bombay. And he was a great orator, so he started teaching in government college. And later on, you know that Ramjit Malani per hour would have charged anything between 20 lakhs to 40 lakhs. So our profession is like that. 
if you want to be a litigation lawyer sir used to say it's like tapasya you have to be prepared to be hungry you have to prepare to miss your sleep and just focus on bettering your skills and talent and this court grind or this kind of a court waiting is part of that process so one should see it as a kind of with respect with awe and with the deep appreciation for the steadfastness of those people who are prepared to undergo this kind of humiliation in the premises of the court this kind of uh, wrong uh, vibes about themselves that may send out but these these are the persistent people who may make it big also who may not make it big until they fight, find right mentor right. sir used to say that the difference between me and another person with my situation who didn't make it big is that i used every opportunity to the hilt i used my every case as a brand building image building opportunity i gave my 100% worked hard innovated my own techniques of winning the case and litigation strategies so this is the fate and this is the path and the journey that every litigation lawyer has to look forward to and the pressure and uh, trials that you have to endure to there is no miracle you know in our profession there is nothing like that because if you look back sir used to say this in some of his induction lectures if you look back at the evolution of our profession what is this government for the gown always had a pocket at the back and lawyer is not supposed to expect any remuneration that was a era uh, where lawyers were looked up to as the defenders of truth and justice so uh, even in the biblical context we have stories uh, even in indian context you know and advocate or arabian knights we have cultures which are replete with examples of lawyers being public service people without expecting much in return and defending the cause of justice and truth and thereby saving someone from gallows from humiliation from getting killed by uh, stoning to death so this is how our profession stands so today's law graduates who are BALLB or BBLLB or BCom LLB go through the same grind as far as LLB is concerned because there is a structured curriculum from Bar Council of India which provides for a regular degree with a certain number of courses and a honors degree with eight courses added on to it but the basic process in the first and second year will be qualifying for their integrated degrees first part and that one if you see BA Uh, degree and uh, bcom degree and bba llb degree as pre law part of the training right. are qualifying students with some additional skills or unique skill sets for example i don't mean to say this is hard and fast rule mm-hmm. students who take ba llb normally are those students who have lot of inclination towards public law right. and uh, towards constitution towards administrative law towards civil services towards governance towards policy research on the other hand students with bba llb have also gone into it when they shifted their interest or discovered something about themselves in the five year uh, tenure of the law school but generally in litigation field there is no difference maybe i will make a better lawyer to draft your contract or to give you insights on how to structure your business or defend your business if i am a bba llb that may be a little advantage but as as far as a lawyer's role is concerned both degrees do not make a difference if you are getting into those kinds of careers so we have careers also we have careers which are broadly classified into court based careers where your ba bba bcom llb does not your prefix doesn't make any difference it's about how you go through your mentoring process make use of your uh, internships and you set those goals so if you don't want to be a lawyer waiting without briefs for years and years solution number 1 identify what do you like who you are what are the opportunities that you have and the right kind of law school to train that suppose you go to a law school which does not have a way of mentoring you through the faculty through the professionals the syllabus is not seriously delivered because of limitations infrastructure limitation good faculty good lab preparing for the 21st century in terms of technological skills good placement cell then don't choose such a law school if you cannot afford such a good law school because good quality always costs money there are banks through which loans are available if you cannot do that also then you work hard try your luck at a better law school maybe by taking a couple of entrance examinations for first or second time you will improve your score go through the proper orientation and coaching so that's one second 
we some of our law schools which are top 10 law schools in the country we have gone through a kind of uh, systematic uh, training right. towards the fag end of dr menon's life in 2019 mm-hmm. who was a pioneer of national law school movement about how to reduce the gap between college and profession right. we call it as profession sir called it as uh, practice ready lawyers i prefer to uh, uh describe it as profession ready lawyers because ours is not only practice we have other avenues like corporate ngo academics so profession ready lawyers if a law school wants to create then the skilling should start from day 1 right. so every assignment can be designed like that every assessment can be designed like that there could be very well structured skilled programs which are mapped against the competencies required in versatile law careers right. and then can be imparted with the bunch of resource persons ranging from the court to, to the profession to the bureaucracy and senior teachers so if you don't want to be one of those lawyers who does not want that kind of long waiting period to, uh, to turn the chrysalis into butterfly to be a competent lawyer then choose a good law school know who you are and set a proper goal work towards that goal not wasting any time in the law school and whatever time is available invest on your a professional skill building by getting into a mentorship and internship and then there are other secrets like for example identifying what your interest is what you are good at and where the opportunities are so finding an opportunity is not possible for you as a student that's why choose a law school which has got a strong human capital what is that i mean you may go to a law school which is charging only 2000 rupees fees but it is situated in a state university that state university's law school's leadership or the faculty or the resource persons who may know generations of alumni right. so invest in a law school which has human capital try to get into those networks of alumni try to get into those industry or uh, uh, court opportunities where these alumni are making a mark and then try somehow you manage your uh, mentorship under them your life is made you don't have to have a long period the other point i would like to tell you that's also a secret no one goes through from day one uh, as a lawyer in a uh, trial court and then to the high court then to the supreme court there is a journey where people's uh, pathway changes some of the law graduates take 3 to 4 switch overs in their life they may join a big job after that they may discover they are more inclined to they burn out and they discover they are more inclined to academics and they may go for an llm some of them may discover they are more academically oriented but more in the line of practice they may get into judicial examination or pro- prosecutors examination or become a government leader and go in the judges track so each one of us should be open to this idea of our aptitudes changing because human brain is a very very malleable object so let's be open to that and then uh, if you discover your interest to be a law student early on then you get it verified by assessment centers in india we have assessment centers where you discover whether you should be going to pure law field or business field and then do a 3 year course or technology field or medicine field and then do a 3 year course your fitment to that may vary and you may discover it at a later age also that is a today you read the neat examination uh, is uh, re- relaxing its upper age limit yes. for medical degrees because human potential uh, given the opportunity available in their life and resources available can vary or can remain constant and the more the opportunities you use and the more you are focused the better will be and faster will be your fitment to this profession Thank you ma'am I think that was a very encouraging and very inspiring answer that you have given and I really liked how you have outlined the tips and secrets that students should look forward to in terms of how they should pursue their career and what they should look at as well So ma'am moving on to the next question you might have noticed that nowadays children are more focused on choosing a good college for the college life as opposed to what kind of a career option they can have after 12 So what advice would you give children in terms of what they should look at or how they should decide on what they want to pursue after 12 see after 12th standard uh, you should not wait for making the choice your uh, your whole process should start soon after your 10th or in your 11th standard i do agree that for boys and girls the whole uh, adolescent track is very different yet by the time they are in 10th in the high school itself the formation is very clear if you look at the western countries or even in india in ib system and all from the 8th itself specialization starts so that finds out with major and minor subjects where their interests are 
So, if you want to look at law as a career option, then first condition I would say is that innate call for justice. So, invariably when the first batch comes in every year, first question I ask is what inspired you? They would say we saw suits, somebody will say we saw this Hindi movie, this movie, that movie, Bollywood uh, projection of quotes. But everyone when I ask the question, how many of you felt the call for justice, mm -hmm. every hand would go up and then I would ask to narrate what is the experience or context in which they got this call for justice okay. and each experience is different. It would be an abuse, it would be a kind of watching of a gory incident or it could be the police uh, atrocity that they would have heard from their uh, bai or someone. Okay. So, this is how uh, that uh, innate desire for uh, doing justice or working in the field of justice is the first indicator. So, if your child is uh, that kind of a child who is questioning, who is humanist, then that is a child who should go for law. Second indication I would suggest is one who is logical, one who does not accept conclusion, given conclusion and starts arguing. It is not simply arguing, lawyers are not just debaters, lawyers are collaborators, they are court officers, they are justice workers. Therefore, there is an assessment, scientific assessment which great psychologists do. In Pune also we have a centre, in big cities they have, I do not know in tier 3 cities if they have it available. I would advise the parents to visit such centres. Invariably the aptitude for law and aptitude for business studies, they overlap. But uh, there is a slight difference between aptitude for law and aptitude for business studies because even these assessment tests are not completely designed for law. So, when we were uh, designing our own entrance test, for example, SLAT, I had the opportunity of meeting the LSAT's psychometric uh, dimension designer. He expired. But when I had a conversation, he said there is a very definitive competence that you can fix for lawyer profession. And he, the, he said how they have to design the language flair mm -hmm. and analytical reasoning, logical comprehend, logical reasoning, reading comprehension. So, our tests are designed in that line. So, that is also a good indication. If you get selected in that test, it is a good indication you will make a good lawyer. Right. I do not have great uh, correlation between outcome of our institute with the scores in the entrance examination because what happens is, as you go on, once you have that basic uh, potential to be a good lawyer, right. it is not potential alone, the interest, the motivation, the calling for justice right. because that is the one which propels a lawyer. Yeah. And once you are a lawyer, you are wherever you are, you have a different way of looking at things, you have a very fair way of looking at things. That is the difference between a manager and a lawyer. A manager tries to maintain the status quo, a lawyer tries to maintain the status quo with the equilibrium of justice uh, and fair play. So, uh, uh, the whole calling begins, uh, most, most of my students would have made their decision in their high school itself. Because those students who learn in uh, Symbiosis Law School or top 5, top 10 law schools, they come from such families, such background, such motivation that they are very, very clear where they want to go. But then there are some students, a handful of them who are doing extremely well in law school. One of them is the son of a, uh, of a Fortune 500 company's uh, CEO. And this child was uh, uh, having walkover to IIT Khadakpur. He was having admission uh, earned to AIMS. But he last minute he decided he should do law and he is one of my star students. So, when we have interaction, what I realize is, this is the child who was an all-rounder. Uh, who is into polo, who is into singing, who is into sports, who is into uh, debating, good mooting. So, in lawyering, these skills are very important. You have to first of all have interest in uh, research. You should not be tired of reading and talking and writing and debating. You should be having good physical health. You should have both sides of the mind open, creative side and the logical side. Why creative side? Because lawyer profession is about problem solving and problem solving cannot be without a creative mind. You have to have out of box thinking when you are trying to solve the problem. You have to be a humanist who is interested in human welfare, who is very sensitive. We call it empathy. Empathy is the greatest competence that a lawyer should have. So, if assessment center is doing this kind of uh, comprehensive analysis in India, I would uh, uh, recommend that. Mm -hmm. But if they are not doing, then any overlap with business studies or public service careers, uh, psychology also can come into law. Mm -hmm. Then how they engage. Mm -hmm. So, your concern about choosing between having fun uh, law schools which give you good opportunity to have a good college, college life and a good uh, 
let us say academic or rigid academics my suggestion is choose a college which gives importance to both when i took over symbiosis law school in 2007 the reputation of this law school by then was built as a good law school reasonably but systematic exposure of every student to the co curricular and extra curricular and its correlation with the competencies required for a lawyer and connecting those activities to the curriculum was not there so first we created a student body called student advisory board which is like a council they created their own charter and constitution and then they started deliberating from the first step of participation of students today it has come to the level of kras in the form of impacting students okay. kras in the form of data analytics about how many students have taken advantage of each of the cells our institute spends large chunk of money up to about 3 crores on student activities right. like mooting sports or uh, co curricular sending delegations to the festivals right. debates right. and sending moot teams abroad with our own uh, college spent money right. so here uh, this is very important which many uh, schools may not be able to do with the uh, revenue handling and many other constraints or they may not even have the vision so this vision needs to be driven in a collaborative manner by students teachers and all the stakeholders for example in our advisory we have people from corporates we have people from judiciary we have people from uh, the field of profession at all levels like from pune lawyers to supreme court lawyers so and international collaborations which are 60 plus so any law school we have in the private sphere like jindal law school and others which has got a leadership which believes in merit which has got a leadership which believes in uh, hallmarks of quality which consists of good quality faculty good uh, learning environment student centric quality initiatives looking at evolving every student as a comprehensively skilled lawyer and a person who defends the cause of justice whether it is in the corporate sector or in the court or in policy research so this should be the versatile building of that individual and community service and community service because our profession 50% about our profession is about public service right. another 50% is how we suit ourselves our knowledge and skills into that right. so if a law school has all these with the good library with good technology with good e resources then that law school will ensure with fun seriousness of your complete making as an advocate right. yeah absolutely so i think that was a perfect answer so students out there who are looking to pursue a degree in law uh, don't be put off by the struggle that you have to go through here just like ma'am said right now it's equally important to have fun because that is what shapes you as a lawyer in the future as well so thank you ma'am i think see for example this point uh, there are many students of ours who came here and met came here and met became friends then we got married that is one side like building a social capital but what is most interesting is three or four of them would have discovered their deep relationship to make a partnership they would have started their own law firm or they would have networked wherever they are suppose a simbi uh, alumna has got a case in uh, chennai let us say then he will connect to or she will connect to her uh, uh, peer group in chennai and they will do and college facilitates this kind of network, network. so we, are, we we believe in the principle of human development in service of justice so this development is not just when you are a student in the law school beyond law school also how you can even today per day i send at least 3 to 4 opportunities for new careers or new openings in the government and private sector to every alumna so this service continues and uh, then uh, between alumna also bond is formed right. now we are looking at global alumna initiative and we have got a group in new york which supports all the newcomers to new york university and the bay area wherever the premier law schools are right. and then to present them for the examination to get them internship opportunities okay. one of my alumna uh, was clerking with the supreme court uh, judges okay. he went to new york university now there we have tied him up with the united nations permanent representative okay. he is earning a little money and he and getting his internship and our connect in the world bank we have connected and he is connecting many others and he is encouraging our junior students to intern with him intern. see this is how it is like a chain reaction you can always build human capital through the uh, services of a law school which which makes the students ultimately to benefit in multiple ways yeah so ma'am another question that we have seen coming a lot from our audiences you know with the changing times 
there are such a vast number of options in terms of what career people can pursue. Right? Mm. And people get very concerned that if I choose this career option now, is it something which I'll regret in the future or you know, what is the right step I should take? So what would your advice be to such students? As I told you already, assessment centers are the best way. Parents should travel to such places. In online, there are many right. um, addresses given. They can do that and they can uh, always verify that. Right. But there are certain ways by which a child who has that potential cannot be silenced and they will show that potential. For example, a child who is inclined to be an artist will uh, show that with paintings and uh, sculptures yes. and things yeah. like that. A child who is inclined to be a lawyer will also show by uh, continuous engagement with uh, debating and things like that. Right. But what we need to remember is that everybody has this kind of an uh, unique obsession with corporate lawyering. Hmm. So right. what they forget is a corporate lawyer is first a lawyer. Right. So the tendency to be or traits to be a good lawyer is about not being tired of reading, writing, researching and talking uh, or uh, written communication also. So somebody who is very, very talented in these things can always look for law. Right. Somebody who is very good in mathematics also can look for law, but they may not be the people who may go for litigation phase because in a law career also, suppose you are in the law firm, right. then you are uh, work option can be in the research team, it can be in the uh, court based uh, litigation management or it can be in a collaborative environment. Now these qualities we train and we discover as we go forward. Okay. Somewhat in engineering the project management also has got similar, uh, 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 similar traits yeah. and management per se business related uh, jobs also have similar trends. So certain skills overlap as I said. So my mantra to the parents is that take three dimensions, right. what your child is interested in, what your child is good at and what are the opportunities you can provide through your career, your network or the institute. Then you in, in, invest in a very good institute. If a child is uh, choosing something which is uh, totally different, unconventionally it is making the choice, then you go to that kind of a field where you invest in a good college, you find good mentors, talk to the parent, uh, talk to the teachers constantly. Right. I have many parents, once the child gets the admission, they think the job is done, they are in a prestigious college. Job right. just begins from there. <laughs> so you be in constant dialogue with the teachers, with your child also. These days youngsters don't like their parents asking about their choices, right. their interests, they want to be very private. Very they think they are already also, knowing yeah. everything. <laughs> they are in a great college, therefore they feel out of the world. Now that's not a very balanced approach. A balanced approach would be to pay attention to these three points. So, so watch the development of your child in the high school stage, uh, 11th and 12th. Like this child I was telling you, the boy who is excelling in our yes. college, who could easily fit into medicine, who could easily fit into engineering. Earlier also in my beginning of the career also in Mangalore in a small city, I had a student who had qualified into state uh, medical examination in top 5, engineering top 5. He chose law because they had lot of lands and today he is youngest bar association president, bar council president, state bar council president at the age of 32 and he opened his office everywhere right from district court to supreme court coming from uh, agricultural family. Okay. So first generation lawyer. Right. So one can show those potential evolving from the beginning itself or in the middle or given the right environment if this seeds falls on a good ground it can evolve into a tree much earlier than others like a hybrid tree so that hybridization process is something that happens in a good college with the right kind of peer support with the human capital with the alumni support with the teachers engaging provided the parents handhold this process of making the right choice so we say goal setting so in the beginning itself, students based on their aptitude, interest and family opportunities set one or two goals. Then as mentors we see in, in conjunction with their internship mentors where they are going. Then suddenly in the fourth year they may shift. They may say I don't want to do litigation. I want to be clerking with the Supreme Court judge and then going abroad and doing my higher studies and getting into policy research. Or somebody who is from... Uh, family of lawyers doesn't want to practice in the Mofusil court, Taluka place, right. but wants that family firm to be taken to Supreme Court level. Right. So this is another way. Right. Then there is another child whose family has been lawyers, but doesn't want to pursue that, wants to start a business. So right. we have the entrepreneurship cell which right. encourages right. that. Okay. And then we have 
another example of a, a student who came from a below middle class kind of family who could not afford even a coat when he finished his law degree but became the greatest genius of law students whom we support as teachers and alumni and got him a settlement grant and today he is earning more than anybody can imagine. So there, there are these multiple pathways which begin from one journey of identifying the right motivation and encouraging the child and students also taking that initiative. Students also should be like entrepreneurs. How I want to, my life to be, I should be highly motivated to guide myself as well. One no by one mentor or one law firm job or one corporate job should not make us feel it is the end of the world. This is what I would like to say to the youngsters. They don't have the wherewithal to handle disappointment and failure. Nowadays, whole literature is coming in the self-help field about why failure is a good thing. Exactly. Because it pushes, it pushes, in, yes, pushes you into success, it makes you discover what is not meant for you right. and something which is meant for you, you need to see, right. you know. So these are some of the tips I would like to share. Great, Thank you. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. So I think uh, this has been a key takeaway for parents as well in terms of what innate qualities they should be looking out in their children and in the future also how they are a very important part of where their uh, child goes, what institute they go to and again what is the future process they take up as well. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So another question I think which can be very insightful for everyone, not just anyone who wants to pursue law, is what are the emerging opportunities across different domains that we are seeing in India as of today? See, from my uh, common observation, what I see is data analytics is emerging in a big way. I think even for law, data analytics or data analytics is going to be very important because we don't have a clue about how many law jobs are emerging every year, how many are retiring, what are the new avenues. For example, if you see in the Supreme Court and High Court and all, the vacancies are not yet filled. If only two High Court's vacancies are going to be filled, 550 jobs are going to be created. So, this way, we have engineering field which has taken a back uh, seat but if those engineering colleges were to redesign their programs with the emerging needs in IT field uh, with the, with the uh, skill deficit and talent deficit which is there, that dynamism will create more opportunities for youngsters. So what I would like to suggest is uh, always join those institutions uh, in every field if you are inclined let us say into medicine field or engineering field go to those institutions which are ranked high which have quality which has good alumni base then i think those any career option that you take should be fine now another thing as i already told your aptitude varies and opportunities also vary uh, for example uh, in our country covid time we realized we don't have enough doctors and then we government had to press with special training uh, alternative doctors into doctor's role. Uh? So uh, such crisis may need different kind of manpower or human resource to break the silos and walk through. Therefore, an interdisciplinary component in the, in the learning, for example, engineering students learning liberal arts so that they are not flat in producing their outcome, they are more artistic and they are more aware of the political realities. Similarly, law students learning data analytics. For example, in India, we have a central university called University of uh, Institute of Excellence called the National Forensic University, which is teaching law in the context of forensics, digital forensics, and uh, data analytics. So, uh, it is uh, uniquely preparing students with a kind of scientific basis for uh, using the legal expertise to solve criminal problems and other things and overall justice. So, this is one trend which is coming up. The other trend which is coming up is, uh, you know, in medical field we have dearth of doctors, but then fees is exorbitant. So, a lot of them migrated. So, during the Ukraine crisis, that's what we realized. So, country producing more and more doctors and uh, making it affordable. Therefore, this is one career option. The other career and with the upper age limit being removed, people who are not economically well off getting into fields like nursing and technology, lab technology and then getting into the medical stream is possible, possible because yeah, of this. Absolutely. So, with the new education policy coming in India, harping on two things, multidisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity and knowledge being relevant to the local needs. So, students have to make these options based on where the opportunities are coming and go for such courses. So, internationally speaking, uh, 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 a skill which is translatable beyond the borders, if you see, four skills are translatable. One is the medical one, 
right. uh, medical technology, science related. Right. We, we call them as a STEM related, science, right. technology, and then uh, engineering, engineering and mathematics. But there is also STEAM, A, which is okay. arts and humanities. Right. Within that, you can recognize law. Because today, a digital, cyber, financial expert lawyer is required across the world. Right. If you look at firms like Ernest & Young, or if you look at uh, firms like uh, uh, audit firms like KPMG right. or Price Water Cooper House, which is a law firm with the auditors, right. these firms are global in existence and they have global protocols. And for these protocols and compliances, all the multinational corporations are thriving and they are looking for talents in this field. Right. So the future talent should be focusing on these uh, trans border flow of knowledge, right. inflow and outflow both. Therefore, I would urge youngsters to make a combination of their interest and opportunity and capability in terms of where these careers are emerging. See, banking is going to be there, insurance yeah. is going to be there, right. finance is going to be there, uh, commerce is going, trade and commerce is going to be there. Right. And another area where the dearth is leadership. So, invest your high school days itself or younger days itself to cultivate leadership capability. Leadership is something that cannot be taught alone. You can have aptitudes, but the attitude comes from within. Therefore, participating in the community, engaging in solving others' problems, doing good to others, creating empathy, which is an important quality for leaders, and having a very clear worldview and approach to life and uh, directing others lives, carrying everyone along, these qualities are very much in dearth. During COVID-19, the positions which remained cushioned were the leadership positions, if you see. Yes, yes. So, a lawyer can be a leader. You know, in company CEOs, I have rarely seen opportunities for lawyers to be CEOs. One reason is that we make more money in our profession and we have more prestige and more passion for arguing a case and right. winning a case. Right. But the other reason is that even the corporate and business sector needs to look at different talents. Mm -hmm. Time was there when CEOs only came from sales and marketing area right. because CEO was supposed to sell the company, be the face of the company, etc. Yeah, yeah. Today, the thing has changed. Today, finance people are becoming more and more CEOs because they are able to predict the future of the organization right. and they are able to guide the sustainability and strategic interests. Right. So, uh, I would say that leadership is one quality that needs to be part and parcel of one's orientation. Right. Therefore, look for career opportunities in terms of always reaching that A level, right. means a top class level where the vacancy is bound to be there no matter what option you have taken. Right. If you are doing anything, I, I, I remember Sanjeev Kapoorji who was our parent and now he's our uh, uh, catering school's uh, uh, what distinguished professor, right. chair professor, right. he was uh, telling how his parents opposed. In his 12th, he was having so much marks, he could have qualified to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. But uh, he wanted to be a chef, his parents opposed. But finally, his dad came to his rescue saying, if you want to choose this uncon unconventional line, mm -hmm. but you become a number one, then it's okay. Then it's so, <laughs> any anything that we look at in terms of options of careers, in terms of upcoming career options with the globalizing world, where transborder flow of capital, people and ideas is the occurrence, right. and India has younger population of 65% and world is aging. Right. So, Absolutely. options are going to be a plenty where translatable skills of technology, finance, banking, insurance, arts and humanities in the form of law, psychology, right. and medical and engineering and are going to be there. This is how I would summarize. Great, ma'am. Thank you so much. I think that helps not just students, but even me or people who are watching this video as well. Yeah, so thank you so much for that. Welcome. Well, before we conclude today's wonderful discussion, I have one request for ma'am on behalf of the audience. If you can tell us about your success mantra. Uh, my success mantra is find an opportunity in every difficulty and convert every adversity into advantage. Thank you. Well, I'm sure we have all heard of the saying, great minds speak great thoughts. And today we have all had the fortune of seeing that in person. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your knowledge, wisdom and experiences with us. I am your host, Anshuman Dhanurkar, signing off. Take care, be motivated and focus on the key takeaways from today's discussion. Thank you.